Okay. The cloud storage is full, but we've been granted an exception this time. Um, <laughs> all right. Welcome, everybody, to the IPMS Implementers Working Group uh, for June 29th. Um, let's take a look at the agenda, which is over here. And I guess I can share my screen. Um, all right. Um, Lytle, you want to take it away? Um, yeah, uh, I think we mentioned RC1 uh, last time. So now we have RC3. And we plan to release uh, final O21 uh, next week. But just a PSA. Um, there, I don't think we had a fix for a course in RC3. So if you have any hiccups around course, I believe that's fixed. But other than that, um, RC3 will be the thing that we ship next week. And and that that the uh, some of the cores things are coming with maybe we should have some some cores IPIPs to give people some guidance around. Oh yeah yeah what I will do that, there as well. I, I, yeah exactly. But I I'll I'll add that to uh, probably IPIP corner. Uh, yeah, there's uh, maybe like the context here is that um, for gateway to be useful outside of a gateway itself uh, in a browser context. Um, where content address data is processed uh, from the JavaScript that runs on a page, um, you need to relax the course um, isolation. By default, you are not able to read bytes uh, from, like the JS is not able to read bytes uh, fetched with fetch from a different origin, different domain, protocol, and a port. Um, so historically, it's been always this way. The public gateways had a very relaxed access control headers for course, allowing any website to load uh, data, uh, to read the data uh, through the gateway. Um, and it, it's been uh, in Kubo, uh, we, it's been, it is in, in Kubo, we have some implicit behaviors around that, but that never ended up being a part of the canonical gateway spec. It's been still just something that Kubo happens to do. And now that we've extracted the gateway code from Kubo, um, we see, we realize there's, oh, there's a bunch of header, additional implicit headers that we set. So the box of gateway still does the same thing. But uh, we should uh, make it very explicit at the spec why we do this. And we should also have, we, I believe we have conformance tests for this. So it's mostly a formality to write it down, the course behavior of a public gateway. And probably we need to have a discussion, should that be the same for the DNS link gateway? Or if you have a DNS link website, should that be uh, not the same as a public gateway? Um, so that's the context, uh, but uh, there will be IPIP uh, for this in the future. So I think that's enough for now. Okay. Um, do you want to go through any of, I guess, most of these are, are ones that have been have sort of in review for a while. So I suspect we can kind of fly through them, but the, the remaining IPIPs. Oh, okay. Because it's like the... Uh, the coroner is the next one. Uh, so is we merge next, next one on the list. Unless, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. unless, uh, yeah, I guess I'm going under implementation updates. Unless, uh, Brendan, you have anything you'd, you'd like to add at the moment um, around what's been, been going on with IRO recently? We're, we're Gucci. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's a very short update this week. Uh, merge to ratify the one, the two ones that we said we'll do <laughs> merge and ratify. Um, uh, and kind of like an update on uh, the uh, improvements around uh, car responses on the trustless gateway. Um, IP 402 for partial cars, 
implementation shipped uh, in Boxo and Kubo. The RC3 I, I, I mentioned, the latest box as well, supports this. We also have a test coverage, full test coverage in gateway conformance, and those tests all are bubbling up and being run in CIs of other projects. So for example, Saturn is now running them uh, on their CI, and um, that saves everyone time because we, we, we effectively test using the same fixtures. So the, the fixtures from the, the gateway conformance will be reapplied uh, to the testing uh, section of the IP. But that's uh, like a formality. Uh, and it's mostly ready. It's not like we will change anything, but there's a, um, a, some, a list of uh, ask for clarifications. How should error handling work when um, request is not valid? Uh, I agree, we should uh, add those clarifications. So pushing that uh, ratification to the next implementer's call, uh, just so we add all the musts, shoulds, and mays uh, to the spec. Um, and the order car, uh, I believe uh, we have a, a reference implementation in boxing in review, and we also have uh, conformance tests, but those uh, are waiting for review. Um, I am happy that no one, uh, pushed too hard to rename those parameters. So it may be the first IP where we don't rename parameters, which I find like a per like per like personal success of the organization that we stopped renaming things <laughs> after everyone implemented them. <laughs> um, but jokes aside, I, I feel this one will may always uh, may as well be uh, ready for ratification the next time. We'll see what happens in two weeks. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, that's it. Uh, we have other uh, IPIPs in the queue, but sadly, given the perf uh, uh, limited time and not much movement there, but we'll probably uh, sort of make an editorial pass uh, over things and uh, raise any flags next time. And that's it on the IPIP corner. Reminder about the gateway conformance tests there. there is the, the library happens to be written in Go, but it's just HTTP queries. So like, as long as there is a way to, you know, fetch the bytes with your gateway, uh, you can write it in whatever you want and run the tests and you should be able to get the same results out. Uh, Giannis, looks like you are up. Alrighty, okay. Uh, um... Cool. So I was preparing this. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, if you can click on the Notion link that I put there. Uh, so as some of you might know, there has been a DHT refactoring going on, primarily driven by uh, Guillaume uh, at this point, uh, which the kind of bare bones refactor DHT is ready. And this week has been a, a busy week of the team trying to, you know, onboard other members. Um, some of the people in this meeting have been in other meetings as well, where we had uh, a couple of Q&A sessions. There is a very interesting code walkthrough video, which you can see there, uh, just right below where the cursor is right now. Um, you can uh, You can fetch it from there and have a look. It's very interesting. Guillaume is walking through uh, what he, he has built. Um, so yeah, the, the, the bare bones is there. Several features are missing. There are no provider records. There are no uh, even uh, fine peer RPC. We did uh, kind of an example today, which I can probably link to. I think it's somewhere in the repository. Um, and it's going to be useful to uh, go through it and just, you know, land the, the RPC itself. Uh, and the team is going to be working on, you know, providing all the necessary features that are needed in order to finally have it shipped into, uh, into Kubo release. Uh, I don't have a date or an ETA, but um, yeah, work is happening. If you want to be involved, uh, this link there, the, this project is providing all the interesting information that you need to be aware of. There is a link to the uh, Go Kadimlia repository, which you can follow. That's where the code is, um, uh, some documentation, description, uh, as well as several open issues that are going to drive the development to, to get the kind of 
feature parity, but also nice to have features that are going to uh, come later. Um, yeah, that's it. A quick update on where things stand as of today. Oh, yeah, that's the example that we did right today, actually, a few hours ago. And of course, if you have cycles and capacity and you want to help out, help is more than welcome, needless to say. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, you. looks good. We're, we're moving from, we have like a, I guess it's a base, a base Kademlia implementation. Then you plug in the things that make your specific thing go with the, the, the network and message layer. And so then we'll have sort of a lib P2P, a lib P2P one, and then the one specific for like, you know, the IPFS DHT or Filecoin or Kademlia or, or um, Celestia or, or whatever. Um, yeah, I should probably link there. I'll put the uh, GM stock from IPFS thing on um you know this particular issue uh, i'll link it from there as well um yeah i want to say something else but i forgot oh, yeah i i want to say that this uh this um repository where the code lives right now is a temporary one it's not supposed to be there forever uh but we haven't just yet made up our minds on when it should be so the temporary place is there All right. Well, we've all been very efficient today. So, uh, any any parking lot items or things that people would like uh, would like to discuss or bring up while we've got a little time, uh, or we can uh, let people uh, get a little bit of time back. Don't say time back. Okay. Don't tempt. Don't tempt. Me. Don't tempt anyone. Uh, Okay. Um, cool. I guess maybe I think we did it. One, all right, I think we did it. Uh, one thing I guess I'll I'll mention briefly is that um, it started been starting like you know, sort of informally some conversations around how to support you know large uh, large blocks in car files and how that will turn into sort of. Uh, how that will sort of propagate through through specs and, and code in other places. Um, hopefully next round, we'll, uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll have something uh, to, to talk about and, and start uh, collecting like wider feedback on so we can uh, move forward. Uh, it's only been eight years of people requesting this feature, so we might do it this time. It would be great. Um, cool. Uh, well, with that, uh, happy Thursday, everybody. Happy Thursday. Thank you very much. Great chatting.